How's it going guys? Welcome back to Dip Discovery. Now today I'm going to be showing you my new moto vlogging setup using the Insta360 ONE RS. So let's get to it. Okay, so I thought I'd kick this off by showing you my current setup that I use, which is quite old now. So this one is my uh, Shark Squall 2 helmet, and this is actually using a TomTom -tom Bandit, and it's actually a side-mounted uh, you know, camera setup instead of having it on the chin, which is what a lot of people are doing these days. But the side-mounted side one I found looked quite nice on the Shark Squall 2. The colours look quite good as well with the white and black on the white and black helmet, and it worked for me quite well, actually. Um, the reason why I'm changing from the TomTom Tom Bandit is A, it's quite old now, came out in 2015, uh, so that's when I first got it, so I've had it for quite a while, but now the um, the TomTom Tom, uh, don't support it anymore, so there's no more firmware updates, anything like that, and there's no more software updates. Also, we can't do 4K, it does 2.7K instead, so, you know, I want to get that 4K footage, um, and it's starting, recently it's starting to eat through uh, memory cards a lot more as well, so... Um, I'm going to be ditching that, so that's my old one. And I've got the new uh, Shoei GT Air 2 helmet now, um, and I'm going to be using this with the Insta360 ONE RS action camera. So, um, and I'm also going to do a chin mount setup as well with an external purple panda mic as well to capture the audio of my voice inside, which is quite highly rated by a lot of motor bloggers. Uh, I'm also using a boosted battery pack as well. Um, with the external mic adapter and I've got these uh, this chin mount from uh, Ride Tech Moto as well So there's quite a lot of stuff going on here to unpack and um, so one of the main reasons obviously why I didn't go for a GoPro is uh, There's quite a few reasons actually the GoPros uh, uh, have been notorious for overheating and that's the last thing I want when I'm kind of recording like, I don't want a GoPro overheating and kind of stop recording my footage and then I don't realize until after I finish the ride so that's a bit naff um, the also the external mic adapter the way you set up the external mic for a GoPro is really really clunky in my opinion it's just stupid so you have to use either a media mod which is another bulky thing that you, you, you put on over the top around the actual GoPro um, and then you can plug in a, you know three and a half mil jack mic a lab mic or you use a microphone adapter that goes to USB, which again is quite a chunky box and a big chunky cable that you have to stick on the on your helmet. Not a very ideal situation, not a clean situation, uh, you know, uh, solution at all. Whereas the Insta360, you just use this tiny little um, mic adapter, which actually sticks on the side of the um, the Insta360, and it also allows you to charge it if you want to as well, plug it in for data transfer, all that kind of stuff. It's less messing about, a lot more of a neat solution, and you can just go straight to the three and a half mil jack lav mic into that instead of using all these crazy mods and stuff. And it's a cheap uh, extra as well. Another reason is the GoPro uh, battery life is a bit crap, um, and you can't really get extended batteries for them, not official ones anyway. Um, so you only get about, if you're in a, a 4K, let's say 60 FPS or 30 FPS, depending on what you're doing, probably about one hour, 45 minutes is what a lot of people say they get from a, a GoPro battery. Whereas the Indus 360, by standard, it already comes with a larger battery than the GoPro anyway, which is uh, this one. This is the, uh, the, the standard battery base, which I think is about 1480 uh, milliamps. But you can also buy this, which I've got here, so this is called the boosted battery base, which is actually already, I've already put on there right now. But the boosted battery base um, gives you, I think about three hours 47 worth of recording time. So that's like dope, this huge amount of recording. So it's really, really good um, that, it, it, that you can actually get that as well. And again, not a very expensive option. And if you go for the boosted battery base, you don't have to use the cage to hold this thing in. It acts like, Kind of like the GoPro mount where you've got the uh, the GoPro, uh, you know, well the action cam mount already built in because of the um, uh, you know the clips that kind of come down like that. So that's nice to see as well. Another thing what I like about the One RS compared to the GoPro is you've got interchangeable lenses. If you want, I've just gone for the basic 4K um, uh, boosted lens uh, kit, which I've got on here. Um, which again performs just as well as a GoPro. It's cheaper as well, 
um, and you have the option of swapping it out for a 360 lens if you want to, or even the 4K one inch sensor as well. So um, pretty cool stuff as well, what you get in there. So those are the main reasons why I've gone for the One RS instead of the GoPro uh, for my particular setup. So let's get to doing the whole thing. So what I'm gonna be doing is gonna be putting it all onto the helmet, showing you the whole process of what I do. Um, I'm not gonna be doing a full like review of the Insta360 One RS. There's loads of great reviews of this particular camera out on YouTube if you wanna get that. But I will show you my full setup and then give you a clip of me riding with it as well so you get an idea of what it looks like as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of the downsides at the moment, the One RS um, being quite a new camera, there is no uh, ND filters available for the 4K boosted uh, lens, uh, which is quite unfortunate, but the Insta360 say they are working on it, trying to get some out, which would be good when they come out. Um, you can only get them for the one inch sensor as well. And one more thing I thought I'd mention is the lens cover is built into the actual unit, so you can't remove it. So if you do scratch it, or maybe a stone hits it, or you drop it and break the lens, then that could be happen, and then you have to replace the actual lens module, because obviously it's a module modular camera, um, which will set you back a bit, of, a bit of coin. So what I'd recommend is what I've done, is I've just got a tempered glass um, screen protector and lens protector on it, which you can get for quite cheap uh, from Amazon, which I'll put the link in the description for all my kit here in the description below, so definitely check it out. But obviously, if you do get a chip or you do drop it, chances are it's probably just gonna save the lens from getting scratched or damaged, and then you can replace it. That's something to bear in mind. Okay, so let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is put on the Ride Tech chin mount, okay? So uh, I'll put a link for the one that I've gone for so basically these are quite cheap, inexpensive chin mounts that you get and they fit any action cam. Um, I've gone for a kit where you get the, the mount clip included as well. You don't have to get that, but they were cheap. So I thought, you know what, why not? I'll go for, go for both of them. And basically the way it works is say, this is the Shoei GTR 2 here. You, uh, they, they're actually 3D printed to every specific helmet and then it kind of just goes on there and it perfectly fits the mold of the uh, the helmet, you know, uh, grooves in the chin. So you get a really, really nice snug fit and it's just stuck on with the kind of really hard work, um, hardly, you know, hard permanent sticky kind of 3M tape um, that you've got there. But you have to heat it up with a heat gun, which I've got here. Well, it's just a hairdryer really. But you just heat it up and then you can stick it on the front there. But the first thing you need to do is give the helmet where it's gonna sit uh, and stick on a really, really good clean. You don't want any insect residue or any dirt on there. And they give you this alcohol uh, uh, little wipe here, and then you can get rid of all the grease on there so it's ready to put on. Once you've actually heated that up and stuck it on, make sure you've got it dead center. You, um, you need to uh, uh, leave it to actually cure for 24 hours before you go out and ride with all your kits on it. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so I've got it on there now. So obviously the hardest bit is making sure you've got it all perfectly aligned, perfectly straight and uh, you know, uh, true as well. So use the heat gun because that helps you kind of put it on lightly and then uh, pull it off if you need to adjust it. And then you have to leave it for that 24 hours, let it dry. So uh, I'm gonna crack on with the microphone set up now and getting the uh, camera ready and then we can figure out what we're gonna do there. So I've already unboxed the Insta360 One RS now. Um, so the good thing about it is obviously it's already waterproof. So you don't have to use a separate waterproof cage or anything like that. Um, and this is gonna be the actual mount that it goes on there. So it's pretty much the same as your GoPro, your action camera mounts and stuff like that, which comes with the little uh, key there. And this is designed to slot right into the Right tech chin mount, really, really easy stuff um, using this boosted battery base that I've got there. So you can just flick these open like that, um, like there. And these are actually nice, uh, The what they've done with the um, clips there, it's actually a metal kind of hinge. So it does feel quite robust. And then it should just slot into this uh, mount once I get it on. Yeah, and it's just like that. And if you want to adjust it, you know, you can just loosen your little thing like you do 
with your GoPro stuff, change the tilt angle and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, as far as SD card goes, I've gone for the SanDisk. Uh, you, you need to go for the V30 um, ones. Um, so I've gone for the SanDisk uh, 128 gig Extreme um, V30. So I'll put a link for that in the description as well. But yeah, if you're going for uh, that's one that I know is 100% compatible with the Insta360 One RS because it already says on the website. Bear in mind that if you do get something that's not listed on their site, then you might have issues with it where it says SD card error, that kind of stuff um, while you're recording. It's not what you want. Just go for the one that they listed. The SanDisk one's really good. I've used them before. Um, so I recommend that one. Check out the link in the description. Um, right, so now that we've done that, what we need to do is put on the uh, mic adapter as well. So the mic adapter just goes into the side of the Insta360 One RS there, so let's do that. So all you need to do is open out the uh, side door here. And the good thing about the side door on the Insta360 One RS, you can actually remove it completely. So you can just pull it away from its clip and then you have to keep that in a safe place. Um, but then that allows you to put in this. So that's where you'd actually normally put in your SD card as well and charge it. But this thing, um, you can just slot it in there. So let's do that. Okay, so now it's in there and it actually gives you a nice reassuring click and it also keeps it watertight as well if you are using that and obviously it starts raining and all that kind of stuff. So once it's upright like that, you've got a jack there and you've also got the, uh, in, uh, what's it called the, the charging thing at the bottom of it as well you can't flip it around and do it upside down unfortunately it just won't work like that because the charging port won't connection won't sync up so bear that in mind now here's the purple panda so if you want to have a look at my review of the purple panda mic um i'll put the link in the description but i've done a full review of this um off the bike and on the bike so that's uh, something worth checking out if you're interested in getting the purple panda but the purple panda is quite a highly rated inexpensive lav mic that a lot of uh, moto vloggers recommend so that's why i kind of tried it out and you do get a nice little bundle of accessories as well with it which is nice to see um so at the moment i'm recording using a, a rode lavalier go um which uh, you know is great um but uh you know, I just wanted to try the Purple Panda instead of the Road Lab Go um, for for this because a lot of people recommend it. So, so here we go. So you need to use the adapter because the uh, the actual microphone itself comes with three lines in the TRS. So you need to use a two-line adapter for the uh, One RS. So that'll plug into there, like like so. So this is what I was saying before. So obviously this sticks out up like that. So what I probably will do. Um, I've not got around to it, but by a little uh, right angle, so it's not quite as stuck up like that protruding, but it's minor for the, at the moment. So once I've got that in there, I'm going to uh, get this, uh, I'll put that to the side there for a sec. Um, I'm going to get this uh, lav mic, which has got a bit of a cable on it as well, which is quite long, and we won't need all of that in the side of the helmet. So what I'm going to do is take all the cheat pads out of the helmet, um, find a good place to route it and position the uh, the microphone. Uh, the microphone itself already comes with a lav clip on it, so you might as well remove that because you're not going to need it, uh, which I'll just do now. Yep, there we go. Okay, and it has a little uh, boom kind of windshield on it, a sponge one, but you can also replace it with one with a dead cap, which will help when you're motor vlogging because it'll keep out the wind so i will put that on because you know when you're on a bike you're always going to get a bit of wind you know coming up underneath the helmet and you kind of want to plump this up a bit and then stick it all over so let's jump with it on okay so once you've done that it looks something like this uh, and the idea is you actually have to get these kind of go in all directions all the wind muffs so you know, I'm going to try that out like that and see what the audio is like. Um, good thing about the One RS is it has got external mic gain control. So if you find that it's too loud or too quiet, you can actually boost it or reduce it. So you don't get that annoying uh, feedback, um, you know, on pops and crackles and stuff. So that's another thing to bear in mind. 
So I'm gonna take these little labels off and then we can start chucking it in the uh, helmet. Now it's a good idea to take off the your visor for this bit because it's just gonna kind of get in the way while you're filling around with your helmet. So just to get it out of the way, there we go. GTA 2 from Show is quite easy to remove because it's got two kind of clips and then you just kind of pull it away like that. Okay, so then you're going to want to take the cheat pads out. Um, let's do that. Now I've got a uh, Harman Kardon SRL mesh system installed already and the good thing about that is because it's an integrated solution, the cables for that unit doesn't really get in the way. Um, so we're going to have to uh, find a solution for this where we, you know, we kind of, the best way to do it is kind of rope the excess cable in the skull section, you know, down the vents and stuff. To stick it down, you can use some um, uh, black electrical tape to kind of stick the uh, cable actually in place. So it doesn't like come fiddling out when you're uh, putting all the foam back together. That's a good thing to do. Now I've found with my last camera that the best place to actually have the mic is on the side, like, like there, where your voice is, um, kind of like just in front of the um, cheat pad, uh, but not right dead center, um, like, like, like there. Um, and it makes it easier to route this kind of cable because you can just stick it inside where the skull cap is. So that's where I would recommend it because that worked well for me. Um, and I think Chase on two wheels, he said the same thing, uh, works well for him. Okay guys, so once you've finished routing all the cable, uh, this is what I've done with mine, so it'll look pretty much something like this. So this is where the cable goes up to the you know, the camera at the front there. And then what I've done, so these are all electrical tape. Now you have to remember as well, once the cheat pads and the skull caps are all back in place, it's gonna pretty much hold most of the cable in position. So these are just kind of to neaten it up and make sure it goes where you wanna go. So I just write it like that, using electrical tape, around the kind of uh, center SRL mesh speaker here. Then up here, and then this is where the bulk of the cable's been kind of bunched up. So up there, and then I've kind of double routed it here. And it's really, really flat if you put it inside those channels there. And obviously those channels are designed for airflow, so it might restrict it. Obviously in any motor vlog kind of helmet setup, you are gonna have a little bit less of airflow kind of going around, but and then that cable kind of goes down like that there and then here to the side naturally where the SRL microphone goes and then that's the boom mic there and obviously once I put the cheat pads back um, you won't notice any of this so it'll be a really na neat job okay so now all the uh, cheat pads in as you can see it's quite a neat setup you can't see any cables here except for the one that's obviously going to go to the camera uh, what I'd recommend is here where the boom is right so it does kind of move around a bit. So you might find that you might pick up a rustling sound um, if you actually are going out with with it like that, you know, with it uh, moving around. I don't know yet, but to prevent it, what I'm gonna do is if you get one of these, so this is just like a, an adhesive zip tie clamp, and then uh, I'm gonna use this zip tie here, and I'm just gonna zip tie it. I'm gonna put the adhesive clamp just underneath it here and then zip tie the collar of the microphone uh, so it's in always one place and it won't get that moving around. And here's just what it looks like if you decide not to put the uh, dead cat on it and just use the microphone. So yeah, quite a neat setup. All right guys, so once you've finished, you should end up with something like this. So it's quite a neat setup. I put all the cheap pads and everything back. And as you can see, that's the Insta360 right there in the front. And it's quite neatly uh, put there because you can't see much of the cable. So now I've got the uh, right angle three and a half mil jack cable, which is going straight out of the, uh, the thing there. And it goes round here. And I've actually rooted it like behind the camera, really neatly like there down and then 
if you flip the uh, camera, uh, the helmet upside down, it just cheek, you know, sneaks in underneath the uh, the chin uh, guard there for the wind deflector, and then uh, you can kind of see the uh, the microphone just there hidden on the chin. So really, really neat setup. And it, when you put it on, it feels like there's nothing there, so there's no like pressure points on your uh, uh, you know your your cheeks or anything like that, which is kind of good. And then there, when it's down like that, that's what it kind of looks like. So quite a, a neat setup, if I think, if I do say so myself, anyway. So uh, yeah, let's take this thing out and we'll give it a go and see what it looks and sounds like. All right, guys. So here I am on the road and I'm using the uh, Insta360 One RS with the Purple Panda microphone. Um, so I'm currently shooting. Uh, this footage actually in SDR instead of HDR. So one thing I noticed when I was going through the settings, if you want to utilize the Insys360's One RS um, uh, flow state stabilization, which is the built-in kind of stabilization software into the camera, um, you can only shoot that in uh, SDR. You can't actually shoot that in HDR. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, I think you can do it in HDR and then um, pick it up in post if you use the Insta360 desktop app and apply the flow state stabilization there. That is something you can do. But if you want it baked into the footage right off the get go, you need to shoot in SDR. So this is currently SDR footage. Um, another good thing about the uh, the uh, Insta360 One RS is when you actually put in a purple panda uh, microphone, um, the uh, and it, it, the Insta360 recognizes that you've got a external microphone um, plugged in. And what that means is um, it actually uh, lets you uh, adjust the gain on the microphone because a lot of uh, microphones have different levels at which they record. So the um, you can change it from plus 18 dB all the way to minus 18 dB. Now the Purple Panda, from what I just had a brief look at when I was doing my recording, um, it does actually rec uh, record quite high like it's quite a loud uh, microphone quite sensitive so I've actually got this footage set to minus 18 dB and um, I'll see obviously once I get the footage and put it on the uh, computer whether I need to lower it anymore in post um, you know or not but we'll see what we get but hopefully I'm hoping we get a bit of um, uh, my voice clear enough and we also get um, some good engine noise as well because I don't want it too uh, quiet where you can't hear the engine and can't hear my voice because otherwise it'd be a bit, a bit boring really um, so that's uh, another thing that's pretty cool another thing as well um, which is quite a bonus perk um, being the fact that it's a, a modular camera um, but can you see here I flip around the screen module on the Insta360 One RS um, I flipped it round so I switched the position from when it comes stuck when I was showing you and the good thing about that is I can have the screen facing out whereas on the GoPro because obviously it's a fixed unit you can't obviously take out the screen and change where it is um, and on the GoPro otherwise my screen would have been facing the actual um, the screen would have been facing the actual helmet itself which means if I wanted to uh, adjust some of the settings um, of the uh, action cam I'd have to unscrew the little bolt and then I'd have to flip the camera down and then change my settings and then flip the camera back up and then re-tighten the GoPro bolt you don't have that problem with the Insta360 One RS because you can have the screen facing the back or facing the front being a modular design which I think is pretty cool because it saves you a lot of time from keep unscrewing and re-screwing especially once you've got like kind of like your ideal position for the camera um, now I've currently got this set to a linear lens mode um, which means you kind of don't get as much of that fisheye effect um, you know that action camera fisheye kind of ultra wide lens I've got more of a straight kind of looking uh, view which you can tell me if you prefer it or not you know this is the first time I'm using this thing um, but so far I've been pretty impressed it's quite a nice 
uh, camera to use quite easy to use the mobile app actually works really really well as well and it lets you adjust some settings on the fly um, on the actual uh, uh, on your phone while you're actually out and you can actually preview it as well you know export it to your phone get a feel for how the footage looked like which is pretty cool as well um, and uh, with the extended battery pack it makes it quite good and it's quite a small footprint even with the extended battery pack and like I said it's quite a neat solution because you don't have those are cables and adapters and the you know extra mods and stuff like you have on the GoPro just to get a, an external mic hooked up can do it all quite seamlessly using what you get included um, with the uh, microphone kit and some you know a bit of cable so uh, that's pretty much it guys so I hope you like the uh, quick motor vlog setup tell me what you think obviously it's the first time using it so I'm probably gonna shoot fine-tune it the more I kind of use it um, I've obviously I've used all kind of auto settings on the camera to capture this footage as well so you guys will have to tell me what you think of it and if you've got any uh, questions about how I achieve this setup you know that I've not mentioned in the video please uh, get, drop us a comment and please like and subscribe if you found the video useful and you know happy motoring guys <laughs>